in order to properly uh, assess nutrient segregation, it's important to you know, define regions of the house and find certain feed pans that you want to sample from uh, and collect those samples uh, from those defined feed pans. Uh, what we found works best and what really represents the entire uh, feed bin, which is a pretty dynamic part of, of the operation, is to collect these samples from those same feed pans over time for multiple days. Hello and welcome to another, another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm our host, Dr. Pratima Adhikari from Mississippi State University. Um, we have another guest in our episode today, Dr. John Boney. Welcome, John. Hi, Pratima. Thanks for the opportunity to, to come on to the Black Belt and talk today. Thank you. We're so glad to have you here today. Um, Dr. John Boney is an associate professor and extension specialist and also Vernon E. Norris Faculty Fellow of Poultry Nutrition at Penn State University. Um, John, I'm going to call you John here. Um, could you talk about yourself, about the current role and what you guys have been doing up there in Penn State? Sure thing. So uh, as mentioned, I'm an associate professor here with an extension appointment uh, as well as a teaching appointment. Within my extension role, I conduct applied research uh, that should be you know, directly applicable to the industries here in Pennsylvania, uh, which has led to uh, the research that, that I've been conducting. Uh, it's been funded by a Pennsylvania Research Checkoff Program and some other Pennsylvania-based dollars, uh, which I'm very proud of. It's, it's work that, that they need and they want and they're, they're uh, supporting. Uh, a lot of the work that I've done so far has been around nutrient segregation and how uh, we, we put a lot of effort into research and a lot of dollars into research uh, to determine the optimal levels of, of various products, uh, various diet formulations that will allow us to optimize efficiency in these poultry houses. Uh, but there's not been a lot of work on uh, what happens after the feed mill and the presentation of that feed uh, to the animals. And that's been kind of the, the emphasis of my research program in the past uh, six or seven years. Yeah, that's awesome, John. And we have been hearing, I've been hearing good things about your research work and how practical that is. I mean, even not the mixing, I mean, formulation is there and then mixing the feed and then what comes, like what goes after that. So it's very practical for sure. And, you know, I mean, thank you for doing those awesome job. And in fact, um, I've been reading some of your paper uh, papers recently. So how going to this nutrient segregation you're mentioning, like how should we really look into that? How should we measure those nutrient segregation? What what are the, some of the some of the things that you have been applying or doing in your in your research? So I just think about um, feed sample collection and, and if someone is told to collect a feed sample from the farm to understand what is it that the birds are seeing, oftentimes I see folks uh, going and grabbing a feed sample out of the hopper. Uh, it's a logical place to grab a feed sample. Uh, but what we have done is, is really studied what does that feed hopper sample really represent what we're seeing in feed pans after it is augered and distributed into those feed pans. And in short, the answer is no. Uh, and we see that feed particle, meaning vines and pellets, can, can vary based on uh, where you collect that sample in the house. But we're also seeing differences in uh, ingredients like phytase enzymes. Uh, we're seeing difference in amino acid concentrations, uh, crude fat levels and feeds in different uh, regions of the house. Uh, so in order to properly uh, assess nutrient segregation, it's important to you know, define regions of the house and find certain feed pans that you want to sample from uh, and collect those samples uh, from those defined feed pans. Uh, what we found works best and what really represents the entire uh, feed bin, which is a pretty dynamic part of, of the operation, is to collect these samples from those same feed pans over time for multiple days. And if we know, you know essentially how long the feed will be in that feed bin before you order new feed, uh, maybe that's five days, maybe it's seven days, collecting some feed samples uh, over the 
the life of the feed in that feed bin gives you a, a much better representation of the feed that was sent from the feed mill to that house. Yeah, that's awesome. So you were talking about pretty much all commercial house type uh, work, right? That's what you guys do pretty much going to a commercial houses. That's right. We've, we've had great collaborators in Pennsylvania. Um, all of this work was founded in commercial chicken and commercial turkey houses in Pennsylvania. Uh, so we would go and we, we created kind of four different scenarios uh, varying in the length of the feed line and in that, that's kind of a strange term, the length of the feed line. It's really the position of the feed bin at the poultry house. Is that something a feed bin located at the end of the barn or is it more centrally fed where uh, it's in the center of the house and feed being augured uh, in either direction? So we're looking at overall length um, and then also the, the quality of feed coming to uh, from the feed mill to the poultry house. Are, are you getting something that represents a standard integrated pellet where maybe it's uh, 55, 60% pellets in the feed pan, the rest being fines, or is it uh, something uh, of higher quality where you have uh, maybe 80 or more percent pellets in the feed pan? Um, and, and those factors, the length of the feed line and the initial quality of the feed coming to the farm certainly impact the degree of nutrient segregation. What's really, um, I'm, I'm really proud of is, is we have this research question founded in in reality you know it's it's was collected on these commercial houses and then we do bring that information back to the university and we conduct replicated pen trials uh, to really kind of tease out the differences and, and demonstrate the, the real opportunity to improve performance in the field yeah no that's great and you know i know there's a nutrient segregation happens like once you feed those birds i mean that's what your research your lab has done and found in commercial houses and kind of mimicking in the university so what kind of performance differences that you have seen throughout the life of the bird if you can tell a little bit about how effective that's going to be in a segregation side of things and then the finisher side or even right from the starter. Can you tell some of those things? Yeah, the, this work has really been founded in the grower and, and later phases um, whenever we have moved to a, a truly uh, pellet pelleted feed. Um, so we haven't focused much on what happens with crumbles. Um, so, so grower periods forward. And what we what we see commercially, uh, we can see from the front of the house to the back of the house, up to uh, almost a half a pound per bird difference in final body weight. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that's considerable when we think about the, the target body weights uh, and what the processing plants are really after. Uh, and that's the whole goal of the, this work is to uh, improve the process in the chicken house to have a more uniform flock that is more close to the target body weight, which ultimately helps profitability for, for the integrators uh, whenever they take those birds into the plant. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. Well, that's a very nice information for the both producers and the integrator. And I'm sure, um, you know, people have been already applying. I'm pretty sure or will apply in the future, like whatever you guys are doing over there. Uh, just thinking about here, uh, say, uh, maybe it's going to be a last question as we are kind of wrapping up here. Uh, if we need to, we can continue a little bit. But I'm, th I'm very curious about segregation of pellets. Uh, a normal diet, like what you have, not a, a lot of enzymes added. I know in a com commercial diet has enzymes added for sure, like the, um, carbohydrates or phytates. But OK, let's take that versus a little different, like you are being testing against a different experimental designs, like a different amino acid uh, kind of study. Like when you make a pallet out of that, what kind of segregations do you see, like in your observations, like in a commercial diet versus uh, experimental diet? Um, have you seen of those segregations being different on the different in this bird? I mean, in the field. So what we have done is once again started uh, commercially. 
and we looked at the the segregation of phytase enzyme and amino acids, and then we took that amount of segregation uh, and how it differed from the intended formulation, and we designed an experiment. So we we looked at um, going above and below the intended formulation levels for amino acids specifically. And this is not groundbreaking news, but if you feed a more amino acid dense diet, uh, the birds do perform better. Uh, We know this, but the important part of this research is uh, to appreciate that the nutritionist is formulating a diet to to be at this, this level, this amino acid density uh, and to appreciate that you can have what we found in the commercial house was um, up to 11 percent difference in the actual value that was measured at the house and the intended value from formulation. And when we studied that, uh, that does, you know, if, if you reduce the plant of amino acid uh, by 11 percent, the birds will absolutely perform worse. And um and I think that's the important part of this. It, it's we're, we're not just studying amino acid densities because you know the literature is full of of that. That, that work has been done, and um, and people appreciate that. But but to appreciate that you can have that amount of variability in a house depending on the length of the feed line and the initial quality of that feed from the feed mill. Uh, is pretty impressive. And and what we have found, just to kind of wrap this all up in a perfect world, if you have a centrally fed um, feed line where your feed, feed bins are placed in the center of the house, the feed is traveling the shortest distance possible by being augered to either end, so a short feed line and a high quality pellet, we can actually eliminate the amino acid segregation, at least within all of the, the trials that we've conducted. So we can provide the same plane of amino acids uh, to all the birds in the house, uh, should th- this ideal situation be possible? Wow, that sounds really awesome. That's that's great information here. Um, thank you, Dr. Boney, for coming into the episode today. As we are wrapping up in uh, Nutrition Black Belt, is there any exciting uh, final things you want to say to our audience before we wrap up? Uh, we've got a couple more papers uh, in the works that are going through the review process to to really uh, showcase how. Um, this work can have impact to the birds. We're, we're getting the bird performance piece out. And so keep your uh, ears and eyes tuned uh, for that. And hopefully you read that and can use it in your operation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boney. And thank you all for joining today's episode. Um, we'll see you all later next time in a different episode. I'm your host, Pratima from Mississippi State University. Bye, all.